All right, hello guys, welcome back to this uh, final video on this uh, Hobby Boss 170 second scale P51B Mustang. Uh, so I'm finally done with this, guys. Took me a bit, but it's finally done. Really happy the way it came out. Uh, this will be, I guess, my first completion for 2023. <laughs> Even though I started this in 2002. But I kind of prioritized on this because one of my uh, colleagues at work was interested in it. Being that it's his uh, favorite fighter. And since I've been working on this every now and then uh, here at work on my breaks. And I guess he got a glimpse of it and like oh I'd be interested in that if you don't mind if you don't wouldn't mind selling it but I said no of course not but anyways uh, we'll see how that goes but uh, it's done so that's why I haven't seen uh, too many uh, whips for my F4 and that's because of this one here I'm trying to get this one done and now it is so here we go it's really small. It's about the size of a palm, almost. Oh man, camera does make you look fatter. I'm not fat, I promise. <laughs> Just overweight. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Okay, there we go. So it's done. Here we go. Uh, for paints, what I used was um, Revell Enamel uh, Olive Drab and uh, Model Master Dark Gold Gray for underneath. And uh, also uh, used uh, Revell Flat Red and Testers, I want to say classic white or insignia white. I can't remember which of the two. And Revell flat black for the propellers. Uh, yeah. So, did some weathering on it. Um, but I did have, I guess, two major issues. One was my fault. I guess and the other one was a uh, tail wheel which is pretty fragile so it broke off on me but nothing a little bit super glue couldn't fix uh, as for the paint that was my other issue when I started uh, spraying the gloss coat I think I did too heavy of a coat and uh, end up ended up uh, cracking the base color so I was like oh man uh, but uh, I managed to save it just sent it that those areas off and then just resprayed the base coat and then again uh, did a used a different uh, clear gloss it was from a R Revell um, clear gloss from those little mini spray cans but it wasn't working no more. I think it lost all the the pressure, air inside it, or whatever gas. So I basically just sprayed the stream of gloss coat into a clear uh, glass bottle and let it decant and use some uh, thinner to thin it down and spread it like that. And it worked out pretty good. Uh, so for weathering, I basically just uh, mix some uh, oil paints some brown greens and yellows to give it a almost a, the same uh, hue as the olive drab just to you know tone it down and uh, give it a weathered look and just use the brush to cover it all but I almost messed that up too because uh, when I was trying to remove it with uh, I think it was a uh, lacquer thinner I think I can't remember if it was that or a different one the oil 
paint got all like sticky and stuff and like oh man I now I'm completely ruined the kit but um no it worked out all right I just uh, didn't panic and just used a lot of a uh, um, lighter fluid to get rid of most of it of the oil paints and uh, you know what you see is what remains so I give it a nice little weathered look and then of course I use some uh, pastels for the stains for the machine gun muzzles and the engine exhaust pretty much it might have gone a little bit uh, heavy on it but it still looks good I think but, uh, so yeah that's pretty much it I mean inside I redid the instrument panel I can't remember if it was missing or it just didn't fit right it left gaps yeah that's what it was it uh, didn't fit quite right so I just scratch built one and you know drilled out the holes for the instrument bezels but uh, bezels but uh, you can't really see it so uh, not really work for nothing I know it's there I mean I didn't completely finish it off because like I said you can't really see it so I didn't put any clear uh, uh, like Elmer's glued for the dials for the bezels, bezels. So it's just the instrument panel with the holes in it for the instruments. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Not Nothing much of a uh, extra detail in, other than that. So um, the other thing that I did was pretty much uh, cut the insert for the uh, cockpit clear glass. Because normally you just like snap it in place. But it didn't fit quite right, so I just decided to take those off and kind of work it so it could fit here as uh, close as possible without so many gaps. But yeah, it still has a bit of a gap, but you know, it was better than what was before. So the work paid off. It looks good. Uh, it's not glued in place, so it's just on there. So, yeah. Um, also, uh, drilled out the, or bored out the rocket pods. Probably not as accurate as it should be, but better than just being, you know, solid. Um, of course, the propeller spins, but it's not attached. You can take it off. Uh, when I found this kit at the thrift store here on base, it was missing a couple parts, but it was enough to do this version of the kit that I wanted. I had two versions of the exhaust, and I used the ones that was complete. It was a different set, but it was missing one side. So, yeah, and the, on the picture here, it shows it with two of the same fuel tanks but it actually came comes with one each different types of fuel tank as you'll he, see here see that's one and that's the other one but not two of each so that was kind of weird so I just left them off and I also left off the bombs on there but as you can see it's a pretty easy kit to build not so many parts the fuselage is already pre-made so it's pretty cool of course two sets of uh, canopies and you can make two versions of it too I'll show you in a second so you can see here two different sets of uh, the exhausts I use these right here because one of these was missing uh, what else And there it gives you the option of the fuel tanks, one or the other, but it doesn't have like a pilot for the center. Well, I don't think the P51s had one. No, they didn't. But yeah, so it looked kind of awkward just putting 
one bomb on each on one pilot and then a fuel tank on the other or one of the other fuel tanks so I just like I said I just left them off there's the canopies and also one of the propellers was broken so just glued it in place and here's the options for decals and you can see which ones I used oh let me brighten this up a little bit so I went for that one of course So yeah, pretty cool kit, easy to build, didn't have too many issues with uh, fit, other than on this area here, or the cowling, but it's easily corrected. And then in here I'll show you the underside of the aircraft. Came out pretty good, I think. Oh, I just noticed I forgot to put the paint the position lights here on each wing. I did the top ones, but not the bottom ones, so I'll have to fix that here in a few. Mm, come on. And here on the side, you can see the weathering for the fuel, ex oh, fuel exhaust, the exhausts stains there on the decal makes it look pretty realistic I think decals were no problem they did conform well with some uh, decal medium I used the Revell decal softener and it worked pretty good so yeah that's it before I keep rambling. Nice little kit. I do recommend it. Very easy to work with. And of course you can see all the detail on it is really good. I didn't go too crazy with it, but you really don't need to. Not for this scale. Alrighty. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully next up, it'll be the back to the F4. I'll just start working on it again now that I'm done with this one. Alright, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.